Hi everyone, it's Tim here. Time for me to show you my energy and solar stats for January 2024. Let's get to it. So here's the monthly report generated from the Give Energy web portal. And you can see that we generated a total of 128 kilowatt hours in January, which is over double what we generated in December. It was uh, significantly sunnier, um, which uh, gave us a bit more generation at the expense of um, some rather chilly weather in the middle of the month, as you probably were aware. Um, you can see that we uh, we um, consumed a total of 1,254 uh, kilowatt hours, which um, a good chunk of that is the heating. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and you can see the energy flow uh, was pretty much dominated by grid draw, as you'd normally expect at this time of year. We did get a little bit of solar. Um, tiny bit of it actually went into the battery, but as usual, most of it went into the home. Um, but, and that meant that our self-consumption was way up at 97.3%. Um, this is uh, not unusual for winter. It's not something we'd expect to uh, continue during the summer, obviously, when we start exporting tons. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good. So how does that generation compare against what we would expect for uh, a typical January? Well, it was above one standard deviation higher than the, uh, than the typical. Um, so yeah, it was sunnier than, uh, than we would normally expect. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, this is what it looks like obviously uh, in the New Year's chart, but uh, let me show you how it compares to last year as well. So we had our system installed late March uh, last year, so uh, April is the first month we've got full data. So this is uh, January shown in the orange, that's this, uh, this year, and last year's data is shown in green. So what I'm going to do is gradually fill up this chart with months going through um, in orange and by the time we get to April and May and so on then uh, we'll be able to compare directly to the previous year. So uh, yeah let's see if we can have as good a summer as we did uh, last year. And this is our monthly consumption chart. You can see that we've uh, used a fair bit more heating uh, this month compared to uh, last month. Uh, this is the air-to-air -air, um, heating system, 644 kilowatt hours. Uh, the standard sort of base load uh, use, which I've labeled here as remainder, um, is more or less the same as last month. We use the EV slightly more, 122 kilowatt hours. Um, the hot water, a little bit more than last month, 172 kilowatt hours. This is using the immersion heater in our, in our current hot water cylinder. We'll hopefully be replacing that um, within the next little while, um, hopefully, with a, a heat pump hot water cylinder. That We'll have more news on that uh, coming soon, hopefully. Um, but uh, that should reduce our hot water use uh, considerably. So yeah, I'll be interested to see um, how that compares in, in the long run. Um, dehumidifiers, um, we didn't use them quite as much um, this month uh, compared to last month. 16.6 kilowatt hours compared to 27 last month. And um, that's mostly because actually during the cold weather, um, ironically, the um, overall humidity in the house drops because um, when the outside temperature is low, the outside humidity is low, which means that sort of that does tend to translate into a lower indoor humidity level as well. So we didn't need the dehumidifiers quite as much um, this month or uh, in January rather. Uh, towel rails, pretty much same as before, 15.8 kilowatt hours compared to 14.4 last month. Um, and uh, that meant that the total consumption um, mostly due to the, the extra heating was a little bit higher at 1,254 kilowatt hours compared to 1,086 last month. So one thing I was interested to see is that despite the very cold snap um, in the middle of January, uh, we didn't use uh, significantly more heating um, than what we would normally expect at this time of year. We're just about one standard deviation higher than normal. Um, so weirdly, my model from the data I um, gathered last year gives a quite a narrow uh, range of standard deviations for January for some reason compared to quite a wide range for December. Not entirely sure why that is. Maybe January does tend to be a little bit more stable weather-wise. I'm not really sure. Um, but in either case, um, I was expecting this to be a lot higher, uh, especially because we've actually changed the strategy with which um, we use our heating. We're now using more overnight heating, boosting during um, the Octopus Go off-peak period, which we weren't doing before. And now I was expecting that to um, use a fair bit more energy. Um, I will be doing a full rundown of that um, at some point, but uh, uh, it looks like it's not had as big an impact as I would would have expected so that's that's reassuring this is based on a, a video I did um, a few weeks ago uh, calculating whether it's worth um, boosting your heat pump um, overnight during sort of cheap period to see if it actually works out cheaper overall because um, by doing that you would typically need to use less uh, peak rate electricity to, to heat your home so uh, that's resulted in some very interesting changes in 
uh, the amount of battery that we use as well. Uh, that will all be, uh, come out in, in, in a future video. All that de all those details, I'll, I'll show, share those with you later. Um, but suffice it to say that, um, yeah, that's been a very interesting experiment and I'm excited to uh, to compare the data before we were doing that overnight heating with after we, we you know, we'd be doing that overnight heating. So um, suffice it to say, I'm continuing with that overnight heating strategy uh, into February and March and we'll, we'll see um, how it compares once I uh, once I've got all that data together. So yeah, excited to show you about that. And incidentally, I've been using the Met Office uh, in here in the UK, their website, to show me what the uh, typical temperature was um, during uh, the most recent month. And uh, actually, January was quite interesting. It turns out that on average, it worked out roughly. Um, typical as far as temperatures are concerned despite the fact that we had a very cold snap in the middle um, either side of that was milder than normal so uh, across the month the average temperature was basically the same as what it normally is so um so that's what i t tend to use to see whether or not i would expect the uh, my heating consumption to be higher or lower than than typical so given that we had a typical month in terms of average temperature i would expect our usage to be obviously about typical um, but uh, yeah, the fact that we've changed strategies and maybe this cold snap resulted in above expected sort of consumption based on the fact that you know heat pumps tend to have a lower coefficient of performance when when the weather out when the temperature outside is particularly cold. So that could result in sort of higher than the normal um, uh, consumption. Uh, you get a sort of non-linear effect where the colder it gets, the more energy you use in proportion. So um, that might be that might be one of the reasons why we used slightly more energy in in January than than we would normally expect based on my model from last year. Um, but yeah, I think there's a number of factors um, that, that has led to that. Um, but yeah, very interesting to see this sort of uh, data from from the Met Office, and I'm going to continue to use this. I think it's a very useful resource. So uh, yeah, go check it out. All I did was just search for Met Office. Uh, monthly summaries and um, it brings up a, a nice little uh, um, chart like this so yeah very handy to have this sort of thing available. So what does all that mean in terms of how much it's cost us to run the system in January compared to what it would have cost us if we didn't have all the uh, you know the solar panels and the battery and the EV and all that stuff? Well um, the actual bill uh, turned out to be £170.86 um, for, for January Whereas if we didn't have all of that equipment, it would have been three hundred and twenty-six pounds and six pence. So uh, we've saved a fair bit. Um, in fact, we've saved a total of one hundred and sixty-five pounds twenty-four. Now that is the difference between these two values, but also including the uh, the DFS. Um, so this is the what would, what Octopus call the saving sessions. Um, but what uh, we've signed up to is the um, the give back. Um, give energy and uh, axle energy uh, collaboration and that's given us uh, a saving of 10 pounds and four pence um, that there was only one of those sessions in January so uh, compared to December where we had uh, quite a few so in December we actually got 85 pounds and 74 pence of uh, DFS payback um, whereas um, in January it was only 10 pounds but it all helps um, which meant that uh, you know our total savings were um, a little bit down compared to December, but I'm still pretty happy with uh, with £165 saved. So um, what I'll do is once we've got a full year year's worth of data, I'll um, show you the full sort of annual savings for the system. And uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll happen in another couple of months because obviously I need need the uh, the February and the, the March uh, data for that to get uh, one full year's worth of, uh, of data. So I'll, uh, I'll have a video on that at some point, hopefully in, well, it'll be April, I guess. So yeah, look forward to that one. So there you go, that's the energy and solar stats for January 2024. Hopefully you found that interesting or useful in some way. Uh, and if you did and you're not yet with Octopus Energy and you um, would like to uh, help support the channel, then please feel free to use our Octopus referral code that's at the end of this video and down in the description. If you do that and you sign up, uh, as soon as you switch over, uh, Octopus will give you £50 credit to your account and I'll also get £50 credit which will uh, help me continue to run this channel. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.